welcome to fmtraining.tv. My name is Margaret. I'll be your broadcast engineer for today. I'm here at the wonderful Christian Schmitz. Christian has come on the show many, many times over the last several years and has graciously given us this time to talk about his really awesome product. Seriously, the product is so fantastic that I think I've told the story before, but I'll tell it again. I occasionally get questions, oh, this is so cool that your file maker does this. Do you have the new updated version or is this the MBS plugin? And the answer is it's the MBS plugin, I think. I've used MBS so much that all of the cool features it does, I'm so used to now that I don't remember what file maker is like without them. <laughs> so that being said, let's talk about our broadcast schedule. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So we do this five days a week. Uh, pretty much at 1 p.m. PST, so that'll be East, uh, not East Coast, West Coast time for in the U.S. So for Christian, it is late. For some of our Australians, New Zealanders, it is very early. Uh, today we're talking about the Integrate FileMaker MBS features in a database, which will be interesting. If you'd like to uh, support the channel, feel free to pick up our bundle real fast. We have these options here. There's three options here. One of them uh, comes with FileMaker, other two don't. There are a lot of really small bite-sized videos just for people who are like, man, these live streams are great. I really wish I could understand FileMaker in a more bite-sized format. These are all animated. Richard does all of them, so I promise you won't get bored. <laughs> uh, and if you'd like to support Christian Smith, which you definitely should, monkeybreadsoftware.com. This is fantastic. It is not that expensive for what it does for you. There is also a free version. We've had several videos on the stuff that is in the free version. A lot of really cool developer, like quality of life stuff is in the free version. You should pick that up and then realize that it's life-changing for your file maker development and go buy it. Uh, so with that being said, Christian, hello. How are we? Do How are you yeah, doing today? I'm fine. Yeah, today uh, we had the funny idea to take an existing database and add some MBS features to it. <laughs> Which I think so, would be fantastic. Yeah, I just... So it takes a current plugin and I copy it so we can work on it. So share screen. So I got a lovely database to um, destroy today. <laughs> At starting point. Not sure who made it, but uh, <laughs> you may know it. Yes, I am familiar okay. with Starting Point. Yeah. yeah, if people have ideas, they can, of course, um, let's say, ask a question or find an idea what they would like to do. Mm -hmm. So yes. do you have an idea what we could do? So, okay, we, we, we just did, I'm doing the thing that we just talked about where you asked me, what would I like to do? And my brain immediately blanked. Uh, okay, so. let's, let's go. Uh, so starting point has a lot of things uh, here, yes. invoices, projects, products. Mm -hmm. So let's see, we have a product here. The product has a picture. So what do we do first? Um, let's say you put in a picture mm -hmm. and you don't like it. And let's see, open will, open it here, yeah. delete will delete it. So how about a little utility rotate bill? Yeah. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, just a little thing. I mean, mm -hmm. not too fancy, something someone could do. Let's see this open, uh, this one, some script. Okay, I just duplicate it. Uh, so I have the same style. Let's say I need rotate. And uh, Let's see, um, this has probably something here about here, hiding it if, if the, there's no picture. I may need a new script. So, well, I have a lot of things here. So let's see, there was an existing script. I think it was something like here, 2000. 2001, no. I, yep. Yeah. I may just add some in here. So let's say this gets our rotate script. If you want to do it nicely and uh, make uh, your father happy, we could, of course, uh, <laughs> rename it, you know. <laughs> now, let's say this here, rotate. Oh, well, it's, it's, isn't it products? Product. And let's have the number 17. Mm -hmm. Move it down. Or if you don't like to move it down, you can also, um, of course, have the plugin sort the, the things for you, sort by name. Oh. And now it's it's on the bottom. <laughs> so here you see, 3,000 scripts, oh, this must be big. 
So uh, I connect this. So here, well, and what was the number? 2000. So that's 17. a search box from FileMaker. Mm -hmm. That's not the plugin. Uh, what is it, 17? Yes. I can make the dialog wider. I can, uh, okay, yeah, rotate. Option is script parameter. I don't need that. So, and now you may ask, where do I get a rotate script? So that's where you go to our examples. And you just look for the right category, graphics magic. Uh, do you have here, for example, the sample? Uh, the sample has a rotate button, I think. Rotation right up on the left side, I think. Yeah, there. Okay, looks nice. So let's see where is the script. Uh, so many scripts. So here's a simple script. Mm -hmm. Load the picture, rotate it, save it on success. I mean, uh, and, and don't forget to release a picture from memory. Mm -hmm. So I copy the script lines, go over, and now I need to connect it. Um, so what was the name of this? So image data in T15 products. Now you have to repair this. T15 products, image data, so many things here. Okay. And here, oh. what was it? T15, T15. I think. T15. Yep. This thing is huge. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, we have such features. There's a lot of fields here. <laughs> How many? I don't 105. know. 105. <laughs> okay. How did yeah, you even find have... the number for that? Yeah, that's in the context menu. Here it shows you how many you have selected. Like if you oh. select or you can only select one here, but one of 105 selected. Huh. I, I use my, my little tools and the search box very useful if you have a hundred fields. Okay, pick it. <laughs> so this looks fine to me. Let's go into deploying. I want to show if this is working. So I use the tape button and yeah, something. That happens. was a very smooth, speedy little integration. Yeah. And yeah, it doesn't doesn't cost much. I mean. Just a little utility because you know people will just throw in pictures, and then they'll get irritated because oh, they're like, sense. "Oh, it's, I didn't realize I took it that way, but it needs to be facing the other way, and I have to take it out yeah. again." No, you just have it rotate inside the plugin. So let's see. Um, let's say uh, you have a Mac. Mm -hmm. No, this one, and you like to get pictures in from your iPhone. Mm -hmm. That's a lovely feature. I think Richard loves it. So you can just here uh, say import. It will just use an iPhone to make a picture. Oh, did I, I just cancel it here? Yeah. So what, what can I take a picture of? Um, some coworker you want to take a picture of, and then you get a <laughs> picture of some coworker. So, um, how do we get this into the solution? So again, we say, hmm, we would like have to hear a button and say here, what could we say here, iPhone? iPhone, oh, but... iPhone photo, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not That's sure how much space yeah. we have. Yeah, yeah. so we say, no, we say iPhone and, uh, and, and well, people know that uh, they can click that to take something with their iPhone connected mm -hmm. to the same Mac. I mean, mm -hmm. the iPhone and the Mac have to be in the same local network. They have to be near each other, same uh, iCloud account. Uh, oops. So uh, the, the, the system can exchange this uh, encryption key so uh, they can discuss uh, about uh, which way they transfer the picture and stuff like that. So again, let's make a script. Let's say here, 
2018, and this is now iPhone uh, thing. Uh, let's take a look. You just take one of our 600 examples and you say, oh, I would like to get something. So there's an init thing, okay. We have to, to tell the trigger. Mm -hmm. So we need the trigger script, okay. I paste the trigger script. Uh, I take the init script here. Oh, this, wait, this should be T15. Yes. Products, again, image, oh, no, image. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, this should do the, well, in, in it, to, no, well, it should set the script to trigger. And then uh, we can here call the import function. I think the parameter is a type, yeah, one document, zero picture, and I think two is a drawing. Mm -hmm. So you can do more. So, and this will just ask. So, and I connect the script. So, so, and we, let's see. Did I do anything all right? Everything all right? Okay. Oops. I paused. Sorry. So you don't see that, but, uh, uh, I made a picture with shadow. Oh. What's not going on? Oh, yeah, I have to click. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that um, a sugar cookie? So uh, what What you, now this is uh, something a uh, child mm -hmm. made in school or whatever. Um, so the thing is, uh, on the iPhone, you get a screen where you can take a picture, and then you mm -hmm. click uh, to take the picture, and then you click a button to use this picture. Mm -hmm. And only if you say, this picture is fine, uh, you get uh, a transfer. And now well, we got here picture taking with an iPhone. Which was very simple to integrate. OK, so there we have two questions. How do you change the rotation direction? So that one says rotate right, but how would you get it to rotate left? Oh, uh, okay. So we have the script. There's a rotate one. There's a complicated function because it takes one parameter, decrease. So oh. rotate image by switch number of decrease, positive angles clockwise, negative angles rotate counterclockwise. So after carefully evaluating the instructions, yeah, we can use a minus. Well, there you go, Ken. Yeah. Uh, oh, David has a question about what the terminology is so he can ask about things. What do you call what is after the function and the dot? For example, MBS GI image dot rotate. Is rotate so, a function option, a function mode? Yeah, well, the first parameter of the plugin is a function name, and functions are well organized in, in groups, mm -hmm. uh, like components. I think on the website they are called components. Mm -hmm. So you have continuity camera as a main topic, mm -hmm. and then the import is one of the functions. I think also uh, in this case, we have a function to actually know whether it's available. So can import may be useful. Oh, that would be fun to add. No, the, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but uh, you saw we have this little calculation here mm -hmm. to tell whether to show the button. Now, this currently shows you uh, the button if you have your window mode one. And of course, I love this links, you know. So <laughs> I can look up, ah, one is find mode. Okay. So this shows you the button if you are uh, with the field. No, it hides the it hides the button if the field is empty or you are in find mode, which is useful. But if the field is empty, we want to use the button. So this doesn't work for us. Oh. But otherwise, um, we would like to hide if if uh, if we can't import, you know? Mm -hmm. So if this feature is not available, we mm. would say, uh, yeah, can import. So I may even say if if this is not one, because so, if this is uh, called on Windows, it would maybe return error. I think. 
Oh. And then the arrow is not one, and so uh, the button is hidden. Okay, got it. So that's a that's a guarantee so it doesn't mess up with the windows. So hide button if no iPhone is is there. Okay. Um a little bit difficult for me to test. I mean I would have to You turn can delete off the okay. Oh, uh, what can I do? Yeah, we'll wait and see. Uh, someone can test that later. With with continuity camera, I have run into where it always works, and suddenly you restart the computer. Your phones are not where they think they are, and maybe I have two or three devices, but I only have one that shows up, and they all should show up. So it's a good tech, but you got to make sure your computer sees your phone. So we have another another host on the show. Yes, I am late. I am uh, fashionably late, right? There you go. <laughs> okay. And uh, the iPhone doesn't need to be connected with USB. It just needs to be nearby, uh, have Bluetooth on and uh, Wi-Fi, I think, because uh, negotiation. Uh, so negotiation. They're talking about, yeah, they're talking about uh, Bluetooth and then do the transfer over our private So Wi-Fi. we did it. Did you talk? I don't know why I just clocked into this. Margaret, you talk about continuity camera. This is bad technology. In the term, we've done a show, whole show on this. It's actually making instead of having a, a camera that you have to wrestle with, because oh, I got to bring the phone in. Oh, it's in my library, and I got to transfer it. Oh, I got a Dropbox, and oh no, I got to connect the FileMaker, and that 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 that. It's like it just works. It just magically, auto magically works if you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and you're they're both logged into the same. Uh, iTunes account, iTunes got Apple account, right? Then it's awesome. I love it. So let's think about something uh, a Windows Shop could use. So a Windows Shop may have something for Windows, Windows only. Mm. So I may not show this live here because I would need a scanner, but we have the possibility to copy the scripts here to show the the dialog for Windows to scan a file. Just drop it on Windows, open it. So, okay, no scanner. Yeah, really no scanner. <laughs> okay, I don't have scanner for Windows. So um, we could copy this script and make a button to um, to let the person use our, our flatbed scanner to scan something. Mm -hmm. um, you would just copy this. You would call the initialize somewhere early. Uh, you may then uh, just uh, show the image dialog and pass in a, a directory pass where to where the scans go. And uh, then the dialog would show up. The user would scan something. And when they're happy, they click here, OK button. And on the end, you run your import script, which just goes over the documents in this temporary folder and imports them. One by one. And you can just basically copy those two, three scripts and get Scanner implemented for your solution. Mm. That's the one for Windows. And then we have another example here for Mac. Uh, we have one with, so we can scan for Mac and Windows with and without dialogs. So on Mac, you would have this script here to just configure the, again, the scanner window and then have a trigger here to run whenever you uh, have something to scan. Mm. So let's see, okay, this starts and scanner may be offline, doesn't respond, I don't know. No. Well, that's the thing with the plugin, so many thousands of features that you have to have a lot of hardware if you want to show it all at any yeah, point. I didn't have a <laughs> so, okay, let's go. Um, the scanner thing is something you could do Mm -hmm. with the plugin. Let's show something uh, people also like. Um, so we have the products, we have projects. We have, didn't we have somewhere here a panel with uh, uh, several files? What was it? Let's click through the user interface. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's an attachment window here. For well, what's that? So there's a project and the project has attachments. Mm -hmm. So how about we let people just drop several files here? Mm. How about that? Like it would automatically zip it? 
No, just put them in a different Oh, thing. that would be cool. <laughs> yeah, let's think about how could we do that. Um, we have this drag and drop example, which I love to show people. So, um, so I can just go to a pictures folder and drop something here and I get the picture. In this case, I even got two pictures, mm -hmm. which one is uh, using the pass list and the other one is what the finder put in the, in the drag operation as a preview picture. So uh, let's copy this to uh, the solution. So we need we need uh, something to initialize it, like this one. We would need a top area. What could we use as top area? Maybe this this paper clip here. So let's see this as yeah. Let's give it a name: paper clip. Next thing uh, we need is a setup script. I just copy it over and then I'll put it somewhere. So uh, we need just files, maybe. Uh, we like the current window and this was paperclip. We have the track action as, as a script to run whenever we get something. For the file, you accidentally cut off the E, so it's probably going to get mad at you. Second. Oh yeah. yeah, sorry. So, so that's good? an option. That's an option for the drag and drop. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, so we what want is... to know what we uh, what we can drop. What's the and what's the paper clip? What is that a reference to? Uh that's just the place on the layout where we uh, could make the drop area. We have to define oh, so where just... you actually want to drop it. Oh, backup. So you name an object in this thing, then you register that with the plugin and it's looking for that? Is that what yeah, you're doing? Yeah, the plugin is looking on the layout to find this object named Paperclip. I did not know that was even a thing. Okay. Uh, next okay, thing David Angel says, I'm confused. So, all right, Margaret, you need to slow Mr. Wonderful here down a little bit. So <laughs> we're uh, backup. So the, the mission objective in this demo is to integrate a drag, a multiple drag and drop into an existing solution, right? So yeah. we, f we find the sample file that, that Christian has built a million awesome example files that we're going to take the code, transplant it out of there. So let's pick that part of the conversation up again, because David says he's confused. David's pretty smart, so I, w I think other people are confused too. So let's pick it up from where we copied and pasted. <laughs> Okay, so the idea was uh, we have a script to set up, a script to clean up, and a script to accept the drag. Uh, except, to accept except the, the drag. Except the drag. Yeah. Got it. Okay, yeah. great. So, to position our drop layout, we can define to make the whole window a drop target, or to make just a portion of the window a drop target, like this paper clip. Picture. Okay, so so we're gonna we're, so we're not gonna give it like like x and y coordinates on the layout. We're gonna say here's this object. And then yeah. it's probably going to get the coordinates from FileMaker of where that object's at, probably behind the scenes, I'm assuming, yeah. right? So all yeah. we have to do is name a, a box, name an area, and then we say that is the active activation where we drop and we grab from there. And then the plugin gets at, uh, okay. So that the, idea. in order to use the plugin, we have to somehow call a script or is the plug, the plugin's activating itself because it's watching for motion at that spot. Is that what you're doing? What triggers the beginning of this? No, you're, you're having a drag and drop operation. Like you are actually moving something. I know, but what and then, then what? the system is looking for controls okay, okay. that can accept it. Okay, hold one second. Hold one second. So then, so hold hold it over this spot over there where it's supposed to go and just pause for a second. Okay, come up here and pause. So when, if you go up to the paper clip and you let, and you don't let go, just pretend if we're going to let go, what is going to initiate the action? Is a FileMaker trigger, or is this a your plugin talking to the operating system, scanning that spot? Is that what's yeah? The operation system will ask uh, the control under the mouse, "Can you accept a drop?" The operating system is going to be scanning for that yeah. spot. That then the operating system triggers the plugin, right? And then the yeah. plugin calls a script. Plugin will tell that? the Operation system, we would be happy to take it, and then you get this plus sign. Usually, okay, and then okay, and then the plug, then the operating system is going to give it to the plugin. Yep. Okay. The and plug our control to 
take it can be invisible usually. So let's see. So this, so this is the system. setup. This is this. So this is where you would run the setup that preps the operating system to watch for this. Is that what you're saying? The setup? Yeah, this is set up here. We, okay, say so we want to have the top target on the current window on the object named paperclip, which is okay. this area here. So the setup is telling the operating system, go back to that real quick, telling, telling the operating system that the plugin will take uh, take that from it. And then do you run a script on there? I missed, I missed when you did that. Can you bring that back up real quick, the setup script? Value, create control, paperclip, drag and drop types, file, set, drop, action, handler, get, f is there, is it somewhere in here that we're gonna run a script? Is it, is that yeah. what this? The handler here is the script triggered. Okay, so drag action is, okay, normally I number my script so I know they hate, that's a script. So that is the script, drag action is a script, correct? Yeah. All right, now I get it. FileMaker can only do so much by itself, right? And so if he if if Christian is curing cancer, doing amazing shit, which his product does, part of figuring out is what started the cancer curing, how do we start it, how do we kill it? Obviously the kill process tells the operating system we don't want to watch it anymore, right? How 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 fast does your setup script run? I mean like if, like if you were on a layout and you had it running and then you left the layout, right? I mean, is that like a really high overhead thing, or is it something you could do no, quick that without? Is a few milliseconds. Okay, so so if you so had an on layout, layout, yeah, yeah, on layout enter enter, the, yeah. yeah, on layout yeah. enter, you do this when you come to the layout where you have this, and then there is uh, the free one here to release the drop area when you leave the layout. Free means uh, cancel the oper uh, oh, uh, yeah. operating system from scanning, so it's like. Yeah, Stop, we, we destroy the drop target. Okay. So, and that's Are important you... because uh, whenever FileMaker rebuilds the layout, it will throw away on control. Okay, so let's talk about it. This is a fundamental concept with a lot of what he does. Our on timer, like with in here, when they walk away and then after like three minutes, it like commits the record. It's the same thing. You have to, there's this whole process of telling the operating system, hey, we're doing this extra sh and it's monkey bread talking to the operating system. Mac or Windows or whatever. We're doing this extra stuff. We're going to register a clock. If if no one uses the mouse or keyboard for X number of milliseconds, it's going to run this script. That's but that's the same kind of deal. This is where it's saying we're not going to wait for milliseconds, but if someone <laughs> takes a mouse and tries to drop something on this area, we want the operating system to do something. It's the same kind of deal, Margaret. Does that make sense? Yes. My other question was that are you using script triggers to activate these upon entering and exiting the layout so they're always available? Yeah, that would be useful. Yeah, so we do, were doing script triggers earlier in the week, right? And so that's where you could do it this way. Um, in fact, it's funny. I just watched the screen. You can't see my screen. I'm watching the Zoom call and right above it is BBA and it just popped up with that auto trigger save thing. It was funny. So so if you have special sauce, not all the not all the stuff in Monkey Bread is this way, but if you have an operating system initiated action, so the operating system somehow is going to initiate it, not FileMaker. FileMaker initiates it. FileMaker runs a script. It calls Monkey Bread. Super simple. But if the operating system initiates it, like it's a clock that times out or someone does something weird that FileMaker doesn't normally do, or you put something into a scanner and you start scanning, and, and automatically then the operating system goes, oh, shit, there's a scan going on. What should I do? The monkey break can register that action, tell the operating system, be on the lookout, Bolo. Be on the lookout for a car with a kidnapped hostage. And if it sees it, then it does that action. It does something, right? Okay. So Makes sense, everyone? Script ticket. So you trigger it. Now, when you leave it, you don't want the Bolo. Still be on the lookout for a black car. A year later, the guy's in jail. Be on the lookout for a black car. We've already arrested the guy. Quit looking for the black car. We have to shut off the uh, the thing. Okay, uh, so I I want to implement this trigger script. So we get the number of files here. Then we loop over the list of files, ask the plugin for each file it got. Um, then we will read in the file using one of our plugin functions, which allows you to read any file on disk as long as you have permission. Mm. And now we don't need this new record thing but we have to find a free record. So let's see a free field. Let's see, this is project container and this thing probably has some IDs or 
Let's see. So this is show repetition one of one. This is three. This is two. Okay, so you have here a lot of repeated fields, and they are named projects container. So let's see. Uh, we could set field here and could say uh, we need to have again search with over hundred fields and container projects container. And we need an index. Let's see, uh, let's say this is dollar. Yeah, we need an index for this. Um, container index. Uh, the result is our value, which is here, there. The thing we read. So container index starts as zero. No, as one. The first one is one. Huh? So the next thing would be we would save the name. There's a name field. Oh, isn't that? See, project container text. So project container text is there, and we put in the dollar name. So we have a name for that. So now we need to find a free index where we can put the picture. So we would make a loop. Let's see if, so if the T16 projects container and quick at the index uh, and the world thing is, is empty. So if it's empty, we found something and we can say exit uh, the loop. Um, we can fill it there. Otherwise we increase uh, the index uh, we have to find one. And now there's a little chance uh, that it's all full and say if we are over eight, we exit. So this is an example. Okay. So we look for an empty spot and put our container there. So to and double check, it looks for an empty place. If it's not empty, yeah. it puts in the photo and then it counts up by one. And when it hits eight, it exits the loop. Yeah. So we, we are looking for looking for an empty spot. So I know, you know, this is a live demo. Don't know if it works actually. <laughs> yeah, no. but it's the best kind of demo because that's, yeah, I love that. Okay. Uh, so I say set up. We see nothing. Let's just take a file. Uh, oh, you see the plus? Oh! I put something in. Oh, I got a two. <laughs> I automatically got a two. Oh, nice. 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 So let's uh, just take another picture and drop it. And we got a three. And we have the picture there. And now, of course, we have to, let's see. Get a few pictures, we have a few sample pictures. Yeah. So let's take me three pictures and drop them. <laughs> oh, family pictures. Okay. Do we That's have questions? Really cool. Questions. Yeah, uh, what's, what do we got with questions? I have a question. Um, what if you designate the entire layout as drag and drop space? Like if you as if you drop any file onto it, it'll automatically redirect into the mm. container. Yeah. Yeah, so let's free this. And now we go to the documentation to look for the function, and it's here, attached to window. So this will simply make the whole window the top area. So let's say I disable this, and I put in here. Again, zero for the current window. The script pause here is useful if you put this in a script trigger. So FileMaker has actually time to build the layout and actually put a uh, control there. Got it. Uh, also put all the other things on the window before we attach our thing on top of whatever FileMaker put in. So oh. let me run this again. So uh, we have six. So I need another picture. What do we have? Uh, the picture. Okay, here's a little picture. So seven. Oh yeah, I just dropped it there. 
So let me drop this one just here in the middle. That's cool. And it ended up there. <laughs> you like that, Margaret? That is cool. Oh, we actually have more of them. <laughs> so I don't need to stop at eight. I can probably stop at 24. Will it automatically navigate the slide control? Or I guess it doesn't really work. Uh, no, that's control. that's something for FileMaker uh, you could do. Like, actually, we could open the popover if it's not yet open to show you the pictures. Mm -hmm. oh. So, whatever. But that's normal FileMaker coding if you want to learn that. I think someone has a training video on it. <laughs> A That's lot of funny. heavy winking towards Richard. Yes, uh, we have quite a few. Uh, a lot oh, of functions yeah. have the free XXX step. What happens if you don't call that? Uh, usually nothing. But if you create drag and drop areas and mm -hmm. you don't release them, every drag and drop area may take something like five kilobyte, five kilobyte of memory. It's a control laying on the window. It will be spawned away by FileMaker when it rebuilds the layout. So if you just leak a thousand drag and drop areas, nothing will, will happen. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is to do image processing on a server and forgot to forget to free the images. Like here for the rotate this line. Okay, so Margaret, let me talk about this real quick. So this is a, for a lot of people who are fairly new, here's an important concept. So when you're doing the, uh, programming at a professional level, which is really where Christian lives over here, when you're going to tell FileMaker or your operating system to do something, you're frequently going to reserve memory or it will use memory. And as it uses memory up, you have so many gigs of memory, there's a virtual hard drive. And the idea is that it starts processing and it takes up this memory, especially on a, on a, on a client. It's bad because you might crash the client on the server. If the server crashes, you lose the whole operation until you restart the server and that affects a bunch of people. So after the process is finished, one of the things you do in a professional programming, we don't have to worry about this in FileMaker, but is that you tell it, Hey, we're done with this process. We're complete. It's like a close up cleanup script. It's like cleaning up the kitchen after you made dinner, right? In World of FileMaker, we do we don't have to clean it up. It cleans up after us for the most part, right? But in a professional world of programming, which is where Christian lives and which he he's exposing us to this, is that you're like, hey, first we're going to get all the shit, put it in the kitchen that we need so it's all ready to go. The operating system's good to go. Then we're going to do a bunch of shit, and then we're going to get the results. We're happy with the results. And you can't just walk out of the kitchen. You can, but the kitchen's trashed. It's heavy, it's fat, it's taking up a bunch of RAM. And if and if your mom said, Margaret, you destroy the kitchen, your mom comes in and says, I want to cook something, kitchen screwed up, your mom's going to blow a gasket and crash, okay? And if she <laughs> blows the gasket and crashes, that's bad. So at the end of the process where you, as a human, are, you're going to say, we're done, initiate cleanup. And, and the cleanup is free up memory, throw things away we don't need, whatever that is, and, and you can see it in the sample file, okay? So, But if you forget, or you say you forget, you clean up the kitchen 90%, but you leave one thing. And then you keep running that process. And that one thing keeps getting left and one thing and one thing. And, and that's normally how this is. It's insidious. It's called a memory leak. People are here. What's a memory leak? It's where you almost cleaned up your shit, but not quite. Okay. And so it builds up and builds up and builds up. Then one day your mom comes in, the kitchen's trashed. She blows a gasket and crashes. And so that's practical real life analogy for professional programming which is what this is what christian schmidt brings to us and filemaker it brings a professional access and hooks to the operating system and so as a good citizen it's like the spider-man movie or whatever it is with great power comes great responsibility because you have the power to blow up your computer with this plugin or at least crash filemaker these yeah, days well, it's all productive the thing is memory. usually uh if people have a script making a thousand pictures or a thousand PDFs, mm -hmm. and each of them takes maybe 20 or 50 megabyte of memory. And then if you do that a thousand times and you use 20 gigs of memory, your Mac starts to swapping. It will okay, I thought you said smoke was gonna come out, but no, yeah. Now usually, eventually uh, the operation system will kill the process because it's mm -hmm. taking too ah, much. FileMaker has unexpectedly quit. Yeah, because it's on. So there was a question in the chat about how quick this is. So, so, so I'm questions. throwing six pictures on it. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
the time it needs is basically how long FileMaker needs to upload the container data to the server and to render a preview picture. Yeah. So it's lickety split is what it is. Do we have more ideas what to do? But so would you like let's to see. Integrate um, the starting point, Dad. Well, to be honest with you, we still have to, and this is in your to-do list, Mario, whether you remember this or not, we still have to build the ability to take uh, the PDFs that we have that are in the containers and, and append them and all. And he built a sample file for this. You want to show it again. This is money in the bank. Two things that we have to do. One, we have to put a little note on the, on the, on the embedded on top of the image, a little note, like a one-sentence note of the picture of the helicopter. This is the part where the, where the, the oil fell out or whatever. And then we take all those pictures and we attach them to PDFs. They get this big report, right? So he have a sample it works. We have not built it into BVA yet. And that's on your to-do list, Margaret, whether you remember that or not. I thought about doing something with PDFs. So we have here an invoice. Mm. Someone here, Richard Carlton, bought something and we have to send an invoice. Yeah. So uh, we... We print it here, or we can print it, or we can also make a PDF. Mm -hmm. Invoices duplicate. Wasn't there a button to just make a PDF? PDF to the desktop. It's a. <laughs> we're going to make sure that's in the uh, next. Uh, we're working on a new version, Christian. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay, let's look. The estimates. Uh... Nope, I don't see it. No, that should no PDF to desktop. Hey, go to layout mode and go to the right side over there on the right and see if it's a what we call a hidden nugget. A nugget. We have like special secret. It's like chicken nuggets from McDonald's. Go to lay, layout mode. There you go. Go to the right. Start going to the right. Go to the right. Okay, here are all the little nuggets that you can stick on there. Keep oh, going. There it is PDF. down there. There we go. There it is. See the nugget okay. down there? You just grab it. You take the nuggets. Okay. And you so, drag it on the. You have to drag that onto the layout, then it becomes active. The not the whole, yeah the little button. There you go. Well, you got is that the right one? That's a multi-page invoice. Just, nah, that's not the one you want. You want the keep okay. going that one. That one. There okay. you go. Put, yeah, so this I is like when you. Use, this. There so you go. He has an he has an invoice. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's let's just find the script. Um, I start the debugger. I click the button again and see. It performs uh, some script here, and I use the edit button to directly go in the script. And now I can inspect the script, uh, especially I know it was number 1251. So I can find it here. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. will make a PDF. Somewhere, to, there it is. Save records, it is, there it is right there. There it will do it. Okay. Go and create folder dot of bypass. So and here I will do my MBS things because Ooh. we just made this PDF file. We may want to use the plugin to edit it. So let's see. I really? could, for example, just take the merge button, merge example. Mm. Not a complex one. The first thing I would say is I copy uh Find the script again. Five here. No. I think it's 1215. So 51. So 51. I put my Dyna PDF initialization somewhere. This is some uh, sample code which will look for the Dyna PDF library in the same folder as a database. So Dyna PDF. So that's something you need on. On your client or on your server, you put the Dyna PDF library usually where the plugin is, like in mm -hmm. the extension folder. And then you don't need to tell the plugin where it is because the plugin will automatically find it if it's in the same folder as the plugin. For the examples, we have it that the library is looked, uh, is searched in the same folder as examples. So you can just open my example, use it, and never worry about the, about the library. So on this, too many examples open. But, too many cool things to do. Yeah. So um, I may just copy here uh, maybe the merge example. And go here in the invoice printing and say, 
paste. I got a loss of paste. So we initialize Dyna PDF. It's not initialized yet. We start a new Dyna PDF uh, environment. So you can have several scripts on the server running in parallel to look for things. So we may want to, let's see, first we open the PDF from file. So I don't need all the things here. We have a lot of lines here. Just say, we want to open the file and the file was here a variable, where is it? File pass there. So the plugin needs a native file pass. So we have MBS um, pass, FileMaker pass to native pass. So we can, uh, we can convert them. So I'm, I'm confused. What's the native path again? This is new for so, me. Um, FileMaker has the style of pass where it uh, writes something like file, double colon, slash, slash. Or what, FMNAT or something like that? Oh, the, yeah, they have little weird ones. Okay. Yeah. And nobody else understands them. <laughs> Just FileMaker. Oh, okay. So we convert this to an operation uh, system style pass. Oh. So it will be something like slash users, CS, uh, Desktop. Margaret, this will definitely affect your work at BVA with this, the PDF stuff, this thing. So, um, so we will open this file now, which FileMaker just created. Native pass. But yeah, I, I know it's invalid. So we open the file, we import it. Oops, don't need that. Don't care. Just here, import it as page one. Um, don't need that. So, I know we want to save the final PDF, which we get here. So, and save here. I need to tell it where to. <laughs> so, if I want to override the file, oh yeah, I need to close it. I need to close the import file because I can't uh, all write open files on Windows. I make I can, but not on Windows. And now oh, I can say here. Good to know. Say it again. Stop. Do it again. So the plugin. So on on Unix file systems, you can have a file open by one application, and another application can remove the file and write a new file on the same okay. pass. Okay. On Windows, this doesn't work. So before you can uh, overwrite it or delete it, Margaret, you have to close it. Makes sense. They have to have a so close command. I I open the file. I read all the pages into memory. I close the file. I open it again. I now avoid it back. Save file. Read file. And now I have it in memory in between. And here I can add it file. Okay. So <laughs> to be clear, and so Margaret, so this is important, right? So. Uh, on the front end, he reads the file. This is taking all your 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 cooking things into the kitchen, edit files where he cooks whatever the hell he's going to cook, and then at the end, it's save the file, and then somewhere down below is a clean. Uh, well, there's the release. Release, the release the save files. That that is the save. that's the that's the clean the kitchen command right there. Okay. Yes. Just so so um, let's take the invoice here. It looks like this. I would like to make uh, this thing. Uh, click a link. So let's say we click here on this logo. We want to jump to the website. Ooh, that'd be cool. We do have one question. Do we have one question? We're gonna. I'm gonna do this real quick before we get too far on. David Angel is asking great questions. We greatly appreciate David. Native path is like UNC question mark. UNC is a probably a programming term. Oh or... yeah, that's uh, for Windows. Um, yeah, you can have uh, various paths. So. Um, that would be something like C backslash test test PDF on Windows. Okay. Or maybe even this uh, here server name uh, backslash mm. uh, disk name backslash folder backslash test PDF or on Mac something like. So the native path on Windows will make it US, UNC? Is that, or is that, is that what it he's can asking? Be. It can be. Okay. It's possible. It sounds a little squishy yeah. to me, but okay. So the first question for me is, will this still work? Uh, now this is with our parameter, so I click there. That the, that's the, now I go to layout and find your button. You got to find the uh, the other button. 
Yeah, not the yeah, move that move that point. somewhere. Yeah. There we go. Uh, I'll bring the front. Swing to front. Yeah. There you go. So let's see. I click the button. Something happens. Yeah, Find something happens. The PDF is still there. Uh, oh, I just deleted here. Click the button, and here it appears again. So okay. We have see. Maybe we debug the script. Um, so let's see if I if I want to debug this quickly. I see I have here. You can get rid of stuff PDF. here. Yeah. Oh, I would just override the parameter. Yeah. So. Okay. And uh, now I can debug it and see if it works. Okay. Oh, let's jump right away here. See step step step. So we see. This is a file maker pass and this okay. is a native pass. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, oh, hang not on. much difference. So the, the, the native path. Oh, okay. Why did okay, I'm not gonna ask a really dumb question like why? <laughs> yeah, no well, so I like to put the disk name in front of it. Okay. So we import all the pages, we close, yeah, we open the output by oh missing pass. Oh yeah, I misspelled here. So oh, could you bypass my code? Or... Nice job, Chief. Uh, uh, no, I didn't override the file. Don't forget to put fuel in the helicopter before you take off. It's an important concept. So, native bus. So, on the script again. Uh, yeah, no, it says Dino PDF because I didn't put in a license key, you know? Wow. Uh, by the way, everyone, just so everyone knows, I bought Dino PDF because I believe in this so much. Um, in fact, I want to ask this question out real quick, and I'm, I might send this out to other people. If 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 I'm going to put a note out for people to ask how to solve tricky integration problems, and I'm going to invite them to try to throw their ideas at you, because uh, especially if they buy the product, right, then solving the tricky problem on a live stream is really valuable. I mean, I know we're kind of just throwing this out, sticking it to the wall, like that's a, another, I don't know, a, a, analogy or whatever, but we take something and try to throw it against the wall and see if it sticks, if people like it, right? Yeah. Um, but I want to encourage you folks, David Angel, Dimock is there. Hey, Fox, Jack, Aditi, Ken, Labo, Mikey, Mike, Mike, NJ from Australia, Scott. If you folks, are you all pretty smart, much smarter than I am, but if you run into little boo-boos where you get stuck with something, an integration deal, oh, yeah. Then what you I need to do is... I just the PDF. Because um, I need coordinates on the PDF. Yeah. Okay. So um, I want to add the, the web link. So the web link needs coordinates where to go on the page. Mm. Now, there's something you need to know. You need to put in coordinates. So here, the left point would be maybe here zero. Now, the top position is calculated in PDF, usually from the bottom space. So oh! Then I rendered this PDF here in 72 DPI, so one okay. point is one pixel. Okay. Well, yeah, on a non-rendered <laughs> display. So, uh, can I ask a question then? So, so X and Y coordinates, so X is left and right, so that always is, there's a left column, the left edge there is zero, Margaret. But then the Y doesn't normally start at the top on most computers, but on PDFs it starts at the bottom. But what if you have multi multiple pages? How yeah, does each that... page has its own coordinate system. So at the bottom of the page one, yeah. at the bottom page one would be. So each page, okay, got it. So down at the so bottom I is. I measure here in my little uh, the graphic converter. I measure. So the height of my box is six six nine. Okay, say six hundred twenty. So this would be my coordinate from the bottom. Then I need a width and a high. Let's see, this is, here. Yeah, the box would be about 115. Yeah, 115. So, and we need a link. So if we would know our website, we can put in a link, so. And now I can run the script again. I edit the page one, I put in the link, I close the page and save it. So let's see, does something happen? Oh, oh it doesn't automatically open it. 
But now I get here. You see the hand cursor, and it shows me the URL as tooltip. Mm. So I can click on it, and it will ask me, should I open this website? So David Angel is comp complimenting you that your mind, Christian, is about 5,000 miles an hour, which is normally much faster than all of us. Dimock is sitting here trying to learn. Um, Dimock, there's so much to learn in Monkey Break. Can I make a suggestion? And once again, I'm asking all of you, I'm going to keep repeating this. We'll probably send a message out to everyone about this. If you have an integration thing with PDFs or images or something, not so much at third-party service. I mean, Christian can do that, but some sort of op like... I want to take uh, the first uh, frame, a uh, frame, and turn into a thumbnail of a video or of something, or or some sort of conversation. These little things that really are not an external service. Please write it up and tell us so we can give it to Chris. He can make a live stream about it because if you have the question, there's a hundred other people in the community who have that question. I guarantee it. So let's see. Um, we could also add, uh, you know, page numbers. That's something we could just copy here. So would you just insert that in the edit section? Yeah, just copy it here. Uh, yeah. Put it in. Let's see. This is a, actually, this is a looping script. We put it on the end because this script loops over all the pages. Mm. Oh. Called edit page for each page and then checks the page size because different pages can have different sizes. We set a font, uh, we write the page number on it, and close the page again. So you can edit a page as often as you want while building the PDF, and we often um, just append empty pages on the beginning of the document, which we later fill with information once we are done uh, and know how many pages we have. And here, I use the trick that I can ask Dyna PDF to change the coordinate system for my convenience to be top down. So I can wait. So you can the... just tell it, eh, I don't want to deal with the old coordinate system. Let's do a different yeah. coordinate system. Yeah, this is convenience. <laughs> so That's it's cool. on this. And the difference you need to notice is it's just one of one here. Which... So wait a minute. So the first the first part of this conversation was is is PDF standard is to count from the bottom, but then he has an override. Yes. Yep. Okay. But you you need to know that because there are some functions which don't work with the override. Like as soon as you rotate something, uh, the coordinate system is always so it's always uh, the normal one, bottom. So let's say you have um, you like to append another file. So I can go here and say, at any point, after editing, before editing, I can say, I like to open another file. And let's just say we take uh, the installation manual of my plugin. And we just import it. And now we have to tell it where to put it, page two. Mm -hmm. Or as I usually do, as I will uh, say, Dyna PDF get get page count, like I ask it, how many pages do you have? Put it on the next one. Oh, oh. OK. That's what I usually do. And now I can run it. And here in background, you see we have now 27 pages. <laughs> <clears throat> so if you have some terms of service, you'd like to append to each of your invoices or uh, whatever, nice letter from the lawyer telling the person to pay the invoice. So <laughs> you can do oh. now in Germany when we when people don't pay an invoice, you will remind them nicely. Like, oh, you may have missed the invoice, and then yeah, we try it. that first, and then you come the next one and the next one, and after maybe uh, three months, uh, you go to your lawyer and say, oh, please write a letter. And the lawyer will start the same thing, basically. will ask politely, but then okay. it's a letter paper. <laughs> Do we have uh, another question maybe here? No, everyone was uh, amazed by your 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 stuff here. So I'm going to keep coming up with ideas and topics, but we want people, that when they have to do integrations with their projects, to please say something. Because um, Christian, odds are, one, Christian's already done it. 
and he probably already has a sample file. And if you ask really nicely, he'll probably show it on a live stream. So he practically has done all the work for you. I have to do is copy and paste and try to bug test it. <laughs> um, in the event, I'm, I'm not done talking about how great you are. Just let me talk about how great you are. Just give me a second here. So, so then if he hasn't done all those things, and it makes like a remote amount of sense, like, oh, other people might want that, then he'll probably build it. And then he'll build a sample file, and then he'll say, Richard, I want to come on your show to talk about the new F uh, Monkey Bread 15.1 release. 15.1? We're barely on 14. So, yeah, uh, all of you, please support Mon Christian Schmidt. He's a great guy. He cares. He's coming here to invest his time in our success. And do support him. Mike, Mikey Mike says, please support him. Yes, do support him. Support RCC. Well, yeah, support us too. I mean, I will take a stack of cash or a, a, a fill-up tank of jet fuel for the helicopter, whatever works for you. But yeah, no, it's it's so it, – the monkey bread thing is so – I'm going to say this nicely. So stupidly inexpensive that it's a rounding error on your project. Once again, I, I always used to think that Claire should get it, the product, and put it in there. and But that would mean buying out Christian, which is dumb, because that would script the whole – his motivation for being awesome. They, they should uh, lie, somehow do a deal where they just like light. He still does this thing, but they just glue, put it in every installation. I Christian Schmidt puts more time into his plugin than anyone else does into their utility programs. This is by far the best plugin out there for general. I would say general utility general, like one, if you had one plugin. All right. Now I'm done talking about how great you are. Anything else you want to say? If anyone has another question, we can meet next week. There's yep. another live stream. Yes. What do next what, uh, next what's... week is a Q&A. So if we have things that we wanted, like you were talking about earlier. so Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. This has made my life easier already because Richard is correct. This is one of my upcoming projects is messing around with the MBS PDF manipulation. <laughs> With that awesome uh, end sequence, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Christian Schmidt, very much for uh, talking about stuff today. We will see you all next week. Well, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow, tomorrow for but me. we'll see Christian again next week. Filemaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the Filemaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir.